this relationship establishes a bond not only between God and Adam, but also between Adam and all those whom he represents. And our standards speak about this being all those who descend from him via ordinary generation. generation. But also Eve would be included in that as well, of course. But Adam here is a public person. And as Jeff already mentioned, if we read Romans chapter 5, verses 12 through 21, we see very clearly this comparison of, of covenants and representation with Adam represents all humanity except Jesus Christ, because he was not born via ordinary generation. He was not born with original sin, according to his humanity. But then we see Jesus in representing all of those who who believe in him, ultimately, the elect. And so we see by one act of disobedience, uh, everyone died. And by one act of obedience, uh, the many will be will be brought to life, will be made righteous and holy. So those are those are really five important features of the covenant here between God and Adam, frequently called the covenant of works, which emphasizes the, the operative principle according to which Adam was to pass from probation and gain his reward, sometimes called the covenant of life, which just emphasizes the reward itself. So it's just the term you want to focus on how how it runs? Do you want to focus on the reward? Some people call it the covenant of creation, which emphasizes that this was a, a prelapsarian arrangement given at the time of creation. All of these work, but I think, at least in our circles, almost always you hear people talking about the covenant of works. Um, Correct. That's the phrase that typically gets used. 